HinduExistence.org has reported on Bengal's Khojagari Lakshmi Puja. Some Bengali women have taken to including remembrance of the 1946 Noakali massacre of Hindus in the recitation of Lakshmi Panchali, texts dedicated to Devi Lakshmi. The conventional Lakshmi Panchali is read on every Thursday in Lakshmi Puja as usually performed by Bengali Hindus with special readings of particular Bratakata, ritualistic episodes specified for each month of the Bengali calendar. Now, the tragic episode of Noakali and the gruesome murders of thousands of innocent Hindus has been included in the Lakshmi Panchali as Noakali Parba and read out during the Kojakari Lakshmi Puja in West Bengal. The Noakali riots were a series of organized massacres, rapes, abductions, looting, arson, and forced conversions of Hindus in the districts of Noakali, Bangladesh, during October and November of 1946, just before India's independence from British rule. It affected a total area of more than 2,000 square miles. The massacre of the Hindu population started on the 10th of October on the day of Kojigari Lakshmi Puja and continued unabated for about a week. It is estimated that 5 to 10,000 Hindus were killed and many more were raped and were forcibly converted. Around 50 to 75,000 survivors were sheltered in temporary relief camps. Around 50,000 Hindus remained marooned in the affected areas under strict surveillance. The forcibly converted Hindus were coerced to give written declarations that they had converted of their own free will, and many were forced to pay a protection tax. Dr. Shyama Mukherjee, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Calcutta and the former Finance Minister of Bengal, dismissed the argument that the Noakali incidents were ordinary communal riots. He described the events as a planned and concerted attack. The implementation of the massacre remembered during puja is an attempt to reclaim the memory of Hindu life. Many Hindus were forced to change their traditional practices as a way of breaking the Hindu traditions and worship at the source. These histories are sometimes hard to hear, but it is important to recognize the need to align to ahimsa, non-violence, and dedicate intensely to the spiritual powerfulness of the enlightenment sciences of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. Those ignorant of the history are doomed to repeat it. We must stand up with the utmost of compassion and reach out to Hindus everywhere, revive the authentic gurukuls and Vedic libraries. It is a responsibility we owe to our children and future generations to make the powerful and sometimes difficult decisions today to emphasize the need for a new society, a new way of life, a new path, and new possibility for the disillusioned youth of today. They are starved of guidance and flooded in depression. The best we can do is to lead by example and stand up for the need to return to the proven enlightenment lifestyles of the Hindu past. It's the only solution to the ills of today, the only complete and proven solution with compassion for others and to our own selves in the face of so much violent destruction. The inner path of countless devoted masters can be the only way to remain powerful yet non-violent to others, to stand up and expose the truth and the lies and still be with head held high, building the stronger Hindu communities. If you feel responsibility is a power, you make your life successful.